Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and today I'm going to be talking about Assassination Rogues and their viability for Legion PvP. Now, Assassination Rogue is one of the specs that I've uh, almost given up on while playing on the beta, and I guess it's way too early to give up on a spec like that, but I just want to go over the spec of Assassination, talk about its strengths, its weaknesses, and some of the ways that it could probably improve upon. Currently, Assassination is my least favorite rogue spec to play. It is definitely a lot of fun. It is definitely great for arenas, battlegrounds, and duels but it does lack a bit of that finesse and a little bit a little of that fine touch that outlaw has or that subtlety has just something that subtlety rogue have and outlaw have that assassination lacks this video is really just my inferences from what we can see on the beta about how the spec functions in bgs arenas and duels and how i feel it'll transition once the game is out in august and just how i feel the spec will perform once the game is out first of all i want to say this i love everything they've done with assassination, everything they've done to make assassination the spec of rogue that it is in Legion. I think the fantasy for the rogue spec is there. It definitely doesn't have like this whole parody theme or this whole uh, teleporty theme of subtlety. It's very straightforward of what a rogue is and just, just how powerful you feel once you dot somebody and then you walk away. That's it. They're done. They're doomed. They're dead. And I enjoy the fantasy behind it. I like how dot damage is your core damage. I really wanted for assassination rogue once it was redone on the beta, on, on Legion, to be basically an Affliction Warlock with daggers, and Blizzard were able to make that idea come to life, so I'm very happy to see that. I think the aspect of the fact that you lost a lot of UCC, like a Gouge and a Blind, but in in exchange you are more focused on damage and how you can deal damage and what kind of different types of damage you can deal to a target. I like I kind of like that aspect, I think it's interesting at least that you give up one aspect of what a rogue is to focus on other aspects a little more in depth. And I also really like the artifact weapon that they were given to the assassination rogue. I think it has great traits, I think it has a great effect to go with it. I very much enjoy what they've done with it so far. I'm very happy to see what assassination has come from. But that's not without saying that the spec can definitely improve upon uh, what it is right now. It definitely can use some little tweaks and little changes in order to be better than what it currently is. I am pretty happy with what it is right now, but I feel like it definitely can improve, definitely can be more than what it is right now. More fun, more optimal, more viable, and overall more enjoyable and more rewarding to play rather than having this like whole playstyle of just like I feel like I have to dot and run the world, just hit and run and that's all I do which becomes very repetitive and very monotonous. Again, to go over exactly what I said, I'm not trying to shit talk assassination. I am very happy and I'm excited to see how the spec is going to do in Legion. I'm very happy to see what World Blizzard has done with it so far. And even to this day, I would still find the spec viable to a certain extent in order to be played for PvP. But I just want to go over a bit more in depth of what the spec is in, on the beta and what the spec is looking like it's going to be once the game releases and some of the faults that could be fixed. So I just want to go over it, go over the viability and if I feel as if it's viable for PvP. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video, it's going to be a long one and a bit more in depth. So to get this video started off, I'm going to go over the spec through the basic traits of what it makes a rogue. I'm going to talk about the damage, crowd control, mobility, utility, energy regeneration the spec has compared to the others, as well as the artifact weapon. And I'm going to talk about them in that order. So one of the coolest things about assassination that you'll notice once you look at your talents at PvP talents, there's more than one ways of dealing damage. My stepdad would always tell me there's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't know why you want to skin a cat, but assassination embodies that motto. There's so many ways of dealing damage where you can focus on your bleeds, you can focus on your poisons, you can focus on finisher damage, and you can combine all these different damaging components in order to create a spec and the playstyle that you really enjoy. The playstyle of assassination heavily revolves around damage over time. Definitely it's about getting your growth and your rupture on a target and letting those dots tick. You also have your artifact weapon which deals damage over time and vendetta which not only increases the damage you deal but also deal damage over time through the artifact weapon. So there's a lot of ways of combining bleeds and poisons together and there's more than one way of capitalizing on mostly poisons or mostly bleeds depending on your situation. I feel like this kind of variety is pretty cool. I'm hoping it doesn't turn into like a quick cutter build where people just have, you know, one singular build that you go for assassination is the best. I hope that we'll see a lot of different builds. Maybe some more focused on the damage over time through bleeds and others maybe more poison based builds or maybe something more bursty about like just dealing as many envenoms as possible. And I feel like there's a lot of potential for it. 
In terms of crowd control, I feel like assassination lacks the most. You have four forms of CC, and one of them I don't even count as CC anymore, mainly because of the way assassination plays. You have sap, which is fine, all rogues have sap. You have cheap shot, which is great for openers. You have garrote, and you're the only spec that has garrote, which does bring in the silence as well as a strong bleed damage with it. And finally, yes, garrote deals a ton of damage, which I'm very happy to see. And then you have a kidney shot, which I don't even consider a CC anymore. The reason I don't consider a kidney shot a CC is because you can either grab Prayer on the Weak, where on your kidney shot any mistake 10% more damage, or internal bleeding, which is a bleed effect that attaches to your kidney shot. Assassination being a spec that can invest a lot of uh, a lot of attention into bleed damage, you can actually go for uh, internal bleeding, and then your kidney shot is going to be used on a target you're trying to kill. So no longer can you think of a kidney shot as an ability to off-kidney somebody, like off-kidney a healer or off-kidney a DPS to peel for a friendly. You can't really use a kidney as CC anymore, so no longer do I think of a kidney shot as a CC based ability, I think of it as a damage ability because it applies the bleed, which is very much needed for you to be able to deal more damage. So assassination in the end has garrote, which is a silence, cheap shot, and sap. That's all. They don't, and even Garrote can only be used for silence effect only while in stealth. So as soon as you're out of stealth, the silence effect is no longer available. So I feel like assassination definitely lacks on CC. Some people have said if you were to give Gouge and Blind to assassination, it would definitely make the spec better. I agree with that, but I feel it would make the spec a bit too good for the game. So currently assassination has enormous amounts of damage, it's insane damage. Once you have all your dots, all your all, all your cooldowns available, artifact weapon, vendetta, and you drop it on a singular target, no one survives your burst unless they have a bubble or a block. Currently assassination can literally hardly to know any class unless they have a bubble or a block. And even classes with a bubble block you can still bait it out because your dots and bleeds still have a lot of damage, all you need to do is just not include a vendetta in there and you're good to go. So if assassination were to gain something like a blind, something like a gouge, they would win every single duel guaranteed, they would be too strong for arenas 2v2s and 3v3s because then they would have the same utility plus more damage than any of the other specs of rogue and just simply would make them too strong and the only way to really counteract it is if you tone down assassination damage altogether and then you give them a blind then i guess it makes sense but then it kind of takes away the uniqueness of the rogue this rogue that has a lot of potential damage with it and in, it, if you nerf the damage down, then it's simply just a change of playstyle from assassination to subtlety, which a lot of people would be very much happy with, uh, because then it will be it will make every spec have the almost same toolkit basically, and then assassination would be ahead because it has a silence that you can open with. But I feel like having this class uh, spec diversity, I find that part very interesting in the game. I find that interesting to see and interesting to play with. So I, I don't know how I feel about giving blind or a gouge to assassination. It definitely needs something and a blind would solve issues temporarily, but I feel like it would just create more issues that the spec would need to deal with in terms of balancing and changing abilities. Yeah, I just don't know how I feel about that. But spec definitely does need some sort of a change, maybe some sort of different CC or maybe just more access to some other CC. Like maybe a, more access to a Garrod for silence, that would make me make the spec a little bit better against caster. So then it would kind of buff the spec up a bit higher. Yes, it would make it harder as a caster to duel or get away from an assassin, let alone deal with one. But at least it would make the spec viable in retrospect compared to the other specs of Rogue. Now I talked about crowd control for a very long time, so let's move on to mobility. There was just a lot to say for crowd control. In mobility tree, you still have sprint, which allows you, if you talent yourself correctly, to get past all the roots and uh, movement immobilization effects, so you can stay on your target. You still have shadow step, so you can shadow step kick a healer or shadow step kick a cast from a, uh, a target. But for the most part, assassination doesn't really need that much mobility. You just need a couple seconds on the target, dot them up, and there you go. You, they can run away, but they're still taking the maximum potential damage that you can offer to them. Now I want to talk a bit about utility. Now, I feel like the spec of Rogue that has the most utility would probably be an Outlaw Rogue. An Outlaw Rogue can use Tricks of the Trade to increase their and another target's damage by 15 every time you Tricks. So when you use Tricks, and you'll open on a target, 15% damage increase right there. Subtlety that has the mobility to be able to stay on a healer, stay on a caster, in a way that's almost like utility to be able to move around the map using offensive cooldown uh, or offensive ability. Assassination Rogue doesn't have that much utility. Even if you look at the Rogue PvP talents, there's, just, there's so many cool abilities that cannot be used simply of their 
un unlucky location positioning on the PvP talents. For example, Mind Numbing Poison, which is a poison that you can add for yourself, that will also inflict damage to casters. Once you uh, put on a caster and every time they cast a spell, they'll take an increased amount of, of um, nature damage. You can't use it because of its positioning on the PvP talent tree. Same thing for an ability of Shiv, which has an interesting effect now. Shiv no longer uh, a core to the rogue spec anymore. 25 energy, 25 second cooldown, stabs the target with the offhand weapon for 100% nature damage and applies a deadly neurotoxin for 10 seconds. The neurotoxin causes any ability to incur a 3 second cooldown. So classes that spam damage or spam heal, like a flash heal back to back to back, won't be able to do anything because you shiv them. So this could be utility in order to disarm or to a certain extent or slow down the damage burst of a DPS class that spams one singular ability like a Death Knight or a Demon Hunter. So those kind of utilities, Mind Numbing, Shiv, they're just like locked away at a really uncomfortable spot on a talent tree where it's like it, Assassination could have a lot of potential for it, but it's just it's impossible for just the way that the spec is set up right now with the PvP talents and some of the class talents to be able to do anything utility wise, to do anything utility related, which is very, very unfortunate and makes me just want to reshuffle the PvP talent tree for assassination just so you can have a little bit more of a of an uh, opportunity in order to be able to choose some of the talents that you think would help you out a ton in PvP and to be able to have a little bit more utility to be able to counter different kind of comps and different kind of combinations. I feel like one of the biggest problems with assassination is energy regeneration. It has none. It has zero energy regeneration. Even if you were to spec yourself properly as an assassination rogue and grab all the talents, well I guess there's just only, only one of Vigor. The only talents really increase your energy by 50 and your energy regeneration by 10%. Even if you were to go Venom Rush, where Venomous Wounds adds 3 additional energy every time it grants energy, you will still be energy starved every time you open. It's just the problem with assassination is a lot of your abilities just cost so much energy. They deal a lot of damage, like Garrote, you want to put it up on a target in the opener. You mostly want to use Cheap Shot to stun your target, Garrote so you can put a strong bleed on them, get a Hemo for 30 energy, Rupture for 25 energy, and then you mutilate our 55 energy each. So you end up spending a lot of energy as assassination rogue and you don't get a lot of energy back. One of the other problems with assassination that I found myself is the question of do you just pull energy to then throw all your dots on the enemy or is it okay to invest into let's say you'll no energy, no ruptures on targets, no way of getting energy and then you decide I'm gonna mutilate a target once I build 55 energy and then rupture for 25 energy. That rupture is going to generate more energy for me every time it ticks. It feels like investing into that rupture doesn't make a difference for assassination like it does currently for worlds general in world general i say 100 percent invest you need that energy so then you can keep paying up and you basically would invest energy keep paying up try to live but with how fast things die and just how fast things happen in the beta it seems like you might as well just sit there don't spend your energy at all just let it build until you're fully maxed out and then you can corrode your target for damage then you can mutilate your target and then maybe mutilate again or hemo for damage and then rupture for damage you're not ever looking to increase your energy generation when it comes to your damage and abilities because they don't give that much back in return or they don't feel like they do plus on top of it even if you were to rupture target you're not getting that much energy because it's seven and even if you were to grab all the talents to get back as much energy as possible it doesn't feel like it's a lot but first on paper it sounds like it's a lot 10 energy every tick every two seconds that sounds great but when you try it, when you put it in a situation, especially as active and as hectic as they can be on the beta, definitely doesn't feel like a lot. You basically are going in as assassination rogue with full energy that is going to layer all your dots on a target, or you have no energy and you might as well might as well pull until you have full energy, because then at least you have damage. And that's just the conundrum that I came into when playing assass. I feel like they did well with the artifact weapon. It is another poison effect, damage over time. It is awesome. It cannot be cleansed, cannot be uh, cloaked. Or maybe it can be cloaked, like some of the damage, but the actual effect is physical, so you gotta bubble or block it, which is pretty great as assassination rogue, because you know you can't just cleanse it with like a caster. The effect itself gets stronger. The poison tech of it gets stronger the more you apply your deadly poison. Or whatever poison you have is your main primary damage in poison. So you can play around with different poisons, whatever poison options they are. Uh, I think there's two. There's deadly and then there's another one on the same uh, talent tree as Exsanguinate. 
but every time you apply that poison into the target and they have the artifact weapon dot on them, the dot gets stronger. So it tells us that as assassination, once you commit to a target, stay on them until they're dead. Of course, you can use it to build it up and then just like leave the enemy to die because they're just taking so much dot damage, they're probably gonna die. You don't even have to be on them. Happened to me multiple times. But yeah, it just seems like a really well designed and all the PvP traits basically help you to... Like for example, one of the PvP traits makes you Vendetta so that like random poison daggers get thrown near the target that is vendetta So that's a dot with your Vendetta, a strong poison damage ability with your Vendetta, which makes you super happy because there's like all these dot based abilities for assassination. So I feel like they've done really well on an artifact weapon. So overall, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with what Blizzard has done with Assassination. I'm actually pretty happy and I'm pretty interested in how it's going to develop as the game goes on in the future. Uh, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen to Assassination by the time it comes out to live servers. I think it's going to be great overall to play it and I feel like a lot of people are going to enjoy it. It's the only spec rogue that's staying uh, tried and true to the rogue formula, the original rogue formula, except for uh, missing blind and now missing gouge. But is this spec going to be viable for BGs? Yes. Rated Battlegrounds? I don't know. I don't even know if any of the rogue specs is going to be viable for Rated Battlegrounds. Maybe subtlety with its mobility. Is this spec going to be good for arenas? Definitely yes. The amount of raw damage you have is nothing to ignore and you all you need to do is get yourself together with somebody who can throw out some CC, like a mage, dragon breath, polymorph and let you uh, and let the mage give you an opening to kill whoever you're trying to kill. Kill your main primary target. I'm pretty sure Assassin's is going to see some major play for PvP in general. Duels, BGs, arenas, whatever. And I think so far it's been great. Few things Blizzard could adjust and the spec could be perfect. I think it's still going to be viable no matter what. So use the likes and dislikes in this video please if you can to show me what you think about assassination. Hit a like if you like all the changes and or for the most part if you like the changes. Hit a dislike if you don't really like the changes and then comment below what you like or dislike about assassination rogue of legion. And let me know what you think about the video, let me know what you think about my thoughts. My name is Dalaran, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys are a bit informed about what I feel assassination is turning into. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in another video.